Here we have the Xeon X5470 running Far Cry 5 and it doesn't run too bad. This processor is pretty interesting. It's one of the fastest CPUs you can use in socket 775. Clocked at our 3.33 gigahertz. Hey guys, welcome to our weekly Friday video and sometimes we have a bonus video on Tuesday but today we're working once again with the socket 775 platform and we have one of the very best processors for this socket, the Xeon 5470. Now these processors, they come pre-modified, so all we need to do is flash a modified BIOS and we are good to go. I will put some resources about the BIOS modification process down below in the video description. So LGA 775 has been declared obsolete by many YouTube channels. And yeah, it's true, the Core 2 Quad CPUs, they do not support the latest CPU instructions. So modern games such as Apex Legends or Assassin's Creed Odyssey, well, they won't even launch and you'll get an error message when you try. And this video is definitely not about telling you that you should go out and buy a Socket 775 system. It's really about celebrating this platform and about taking one of the best processes available and seeing what it can do in a range of older and newer games. This processor has four cores running at 3.33 GHz. There are 12 MB of level 3 cache. The front side bus runs at 1,333 MHz. The TDP is 120 watts. The CPU launched in September of 2008 for a price of $1,386. But you can pick it up now for between $40 to $50 on places such as eBay or AliExpress. And here we have all the parts, so we're using a Gigabyte Socket 775 motherboard. I have flashed a modified BIOS to support the Xeon processor. We've got a 16 Gigabyte kit of DDR3 memory with 1333 MHz and 99924 timings. We've got a Radeon RX 570, a USB dual band wireless adapter, we're using a Sound Blaster, a 600 watt thermal take power supply, We've got a Deepcool Gamax 300 cooler, a SSD for Windows and a 3 terabyte hard drive for the games. I had to give up on using a second SSD, I just ran out of space, I want to benchmark a lot more games so I had to go back to hard drives. As much as SSD prices have improved, uh, 2 and 4 terabyte SSDs are just way too expensive. Now we have a lot of gameplay coming shortly, but first let's have a look at the usual benchmarks that we run in our videos. So first we have Cinebench R15, we're getting 359, and that is faster than the Core 2 Quad Q9650, but also faster than the Phenom X965, and also significantly faster compared to the two FX4000 quad core processors. Let's have a look at power consumption and we can see something interesting. For some reason this processor actually consumes less power in idle than the E5450. Maybe I made a mistake with configuring the BIOS or something like that. That should definitely not happen because this Xeon, the X5470 has a higher TDP. So under idle um, it's pretty energy efficient but the FX processors, uh, they sip a little bit less power under load. The uh, Xeon is uh, pulling more power compared to the FX processors and also the E5450, but less power than the Phenom X4965. And in 3D Mark, we can see the Xeon X5470 doing really well. The 10% higher clock speed compared to the Q9650 really pays off. And in all three benchmarks, this processor is ahead. So let's start with looking at some of the more modern games. We have Far Cry 5, Battlefield 1 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So let's see how they run on this machine. Dominguez. 
We should look into it. So Far Cry 5 is a game that is definitely stressing this processor most of the time. We are getting over 30 FPS which is nice but it doesn't quite reach 60 and this is really regardless of the settings. You can set the details to low and it still won't hit 60 FPS. So yeah this is definitely a CPU bottleneck. Now at around 40 or so FPS I think you can call this playable but it's not ideal and it makes aiming and shooting a little bit harder than it already is and the game seems to be quite decent so I will continue playing it on another system to enjoy it a little bit more. Battlefield 1 behaves similar but do keep in mind that this is the single player campaign and really early into the game. Here we are sometimes, yeah, touching on 60 FPS, but uh, only for a brief moment. And there are noticeable skips and stutters going on as well. Likely playing online against others is going to be worse. So yeah, this is another game that does show the limits of the Socket 775, but you can once again argue that this is playable. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, this one also runs fairly well, but it does depend on the level and what is happening on the screen. Most of the time it will run reasonably well, but there are levels and areas that really kill the performance, mostly with when there are a lot of other people around. But still, it looks and runs fairly well, and really this is quite impressive for a processor that's now 11 years old. Now let's have a look at a few other games. Now these ones are on the other side of the spectrum. These are really well optimized and use the Vulkan API and they are known to run well on weaker processors. So we're looking at Doom, Strange, Brigade and Wolfenstein. This is our u boat now, Nazi. You ain't getting it back. There's the lock, but how to get the key? Best get looking, Brigade. It's Gracie's gold now. So firstly I had some issues with MSI Afterburner with these games and using the Vulkan API. Maybe the latest uh, Radeon driver broke something but it wasn't working for me so I used the Radeon overlay to display the FPS. We can see that all three games are running really well, often over 100 FPS and yeah this is really impressive to see such good performance on these older processes. And I really wish that more games would support the Vulkan API as it seems to make a huge difference. So yeah, these games are fairly new and definitely worth checking out because on this platform they run silky smooth. And now we're gonna have a look at some games that are a little bit older.
So, a griffin this close to the village? Strange. My thoughts exactly. In the forest of the mountain, sure, but here? And near the main road. Maybe it's the war. Corpses everywhere, the stench of blood, burnt flesh. Those aren't dark ones. They're watchmen. I'm working on them. One down. Changing clip. Careful! Listen, buddy, you don't have clearance for this area. Move along. Miller, you hear about Corporal Allen? Yeah, they said he just lost it. Shift home this week. Focused, smooth driving. You can catch them. So here we can see that most of these games run really well. The Witcher 3 and Rise of the Tomb Raider, they are a little bit more demanding. They do run okay, but you will get dips below 60. And in The Witcher 3, for example, we can see noticeable starters and pauses. The other games are a little bit older, and these are the kind of games that run really well on the Core 2 quad. With four cores running at 3.33 GHz, we have plenty of speed for those games and the limitation becomes the graphics card. So the Xeon X5470 is one of the best processors for Socket 775. With 3.33 GHz, it's clocked around 10% higher than the Q9650, but it does consume a little bit more power with a 120 watt TDP. So this means that you shouldn't be using the CPU uh, with entry-level motherboards. They are usually rated at only up to 95 watts. So what you should do here is take a look at the list of supported processors of your motherboard and check that it supports 120 watt processors. Cost of course is another issue. The X5470 is one of the more expensive CPUs for this platform and for the same money there are definitely better options. For example, you can go with an i5-2400 or a slightly more modern Ivy Bridge processor, or you can go for a FX6300 if you want something from AMD. Both of these CPUs will support newer processor instructions and will run all the latest and greatest games as well. And finally, the Socket 775 platform does consume a little bit 
more power compared to Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge. So that's also something to keep in mind. So guys, we had a look at some games and most of them run really well. Now the absolute latest and greatest games they won't run and we saw in Far Cry 5 and Battlefield 1 that the definition of playable uh, is a bit subjective. And yeah, it's not something I would recommend you go out and buy for a brand new build. But you might already have a Socket 775 system and this could be a cost effective upgrade option to get a small performance boost. So this platform is definitely being pushed to its limits with the latest and greatest games. But it's not the end of the story. The days of recommending it for a budget gaming PC and uh, with modern games in mind, those days might be over. But a new life for retro PC gaming awaits the Socket 775. It spawns a wide range of CPUs from the Pentium 4 to Core 2 Duo and Core 2 Quad processors and supporting operating systems such as Windows XP or Vista. Together with great prices, it does make a very flexible platform. Because of the lack of modern CPU instructions and massive stock of parts, prices will likely drop further, but the top models like this Xeon 5470, well, they will always command a bit of a premium. So guys, I hope you found this video interesting. I really like Socket 775. There are so many projects you can use it for and the performance is still pretty decent. But what do you think? Who out there is still using Socket 775 and what is your opinion? I will see you next week with our weekly Friday video, but keep an eye out for Tuesday. Sometimes there will be a bonus video. And that's it guys, thank you so much for watching, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, give it a like and click on that notification bell. And I shall see you soon with another one.